It's Thursday, September 9th, coming up live on The View. They're letting loose in hot topics, from late-night hosts finally going after Obama to Snooki getting berated by a judge over her bad behavior. You seem to be acting like a Lindsay Lohan wannabe. And an exclusive look at Barbara's fascinating new special, Seven Going on 70, that takes you into the lives of kids living with a rare disease that makes them age at a shockingly rapid pace. Plus, coming up on The Red, White, and View, General Colin Powell is weighing in on the hottest topics in America right now. The Ground Zero mosque controversy and the state of race relations in the U.S. The wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. And what he thinks of President Obama's performance so far. All that, hot topics and more, coming up live on The View. Us. Yes. Okay. We would like to uh, wish our uh, Jewish viewers a happy new year. Rosh Hashanah is a very important holiday. This whole time is a holy time for Jewish people. It's a time of, of what? Renewal, yes. looking yes, back, yes. and. Fasting. And, and well, fasting next is week. yet is Yom Kippur Yom next Kippur. week. Can but I ask this you? whole period is, is a holy period. Yeah. It's a holy period because I'm not a Jewish, so just out of curiosity, I know in the building. You're not I Jewish. No. Oh. You're the only well, one because, on the panel. Because everybody else that you're it's Jewish funny, would be. It's funny you it. look Jewish. There's no one <laughs> No, I, do, I, I just wanted to know that, oh, you uh, don't look Jewish. The, I don't the know. building that I, that I lived in, uh, people would not press the elevator buttons. Because on the, of it. On, on, this, on, on Sabbath. On Sabbath. On the Sabbath. On the Sabbath. Yeah. Does that have well, anything to do with Well, that's what the Orthodox yeah. Jews do not uh, observe, do observe right. the Sabbath. Uh, and there are certain things they don't then they don't do. If you're very orthodox, you don't answer the telephone. Yeah, you don't right. ride. No you, you know, you only yeah. walk. You do not go up and down elevators. That's that's Saturday. That's a little Saturday. different. Okay, that's, that's, little different. And that's orthodox right. Jews. But well, this Russia is a period uh, of, of, of renewal and yes. hope. And, okay. yeah. and you know, then listen. It doesn't have to be for Jews. It can be for everyone. Yeah. It's interesting because there are so many holidays around the same time. Ramadan is, yes, is the same right. time. Right. You know, uh, and it's, a, it's, you know, when the harvest comes, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. in almost every religion, this time of the year, there mm -hmm. is a, a special holiday. Yeah. So, anyway, there we are. Yeah. So, Happy New Year, y'all. Yeah, yes. yeah you know? exactly. Um, do you guys think there, there may be a, an undercurrent of racism in the USA that's building up? Because, particularly against brown people. Because uh, we have the Arizona immigration law, the Ground Zero mosque controversy, uh, burn the Koran day, and the hammering uh, that that folks seem to be taking. I, I can't think of the woman's name, and it's probably better. But she was screaming the N word all over her. Oh, Lord, we remember. Right, right. So yeah. is that. Yeah. is that is does it feel to you that there's a little tension, or am I just? Being kooky. You know, I don't know if it's that uh, <clears throat> because uh, we now have an African American president, all of this stuff that has always been simmering on, you know, underneath the surface is bubbled up because you certainly hear racism a lot more, I think, mm -hmm. than you ever heard it. Mm -hmm. um, and so it just seems like it's now bubbling up. And it, I don't know, it just seems like there's just something. Well, it's disguised, going on. isn't it? I mean, as far as President Obama's concerned, they, some people still say he's a Muslim, that they, they don't believe he's really American. Mm -hmm. Those he's are kind of like code that, words yeah. for, you know, we don't trust the other. He's the other. Well, there's that so fringe, there's there's against, fringe groups like that, yeah. I think, regardless of who's president. But especially now, it does seem ironic because we have a first black president, yet all this stuff is coming up. Yeah. Well, and so you have to wonder. Why, especially since Obama did receive a large portion of, of what they call the white vote, you know, so it seems disheartening that this is happening, and it does seem like you know the word tolerance gets spread around. You know, you have to be tolerant. Large but portion I never think... of the white vote, but this is a, a small group of people that are pushing right. this type of agenda yeah, that is not American. Those, it's, it's no secret right. that Obama people and... have prejudice, and it's disgusting, and it's ugly, and it's there, and it's yeah. been there, and for some reason now it's maybe just being uncovered but then again. When you hear things, yes, okay, uh, because I think that we're kind of mixing 
mixing things up. When you say there's more racism now mm -hmm. than, oh, oh, there's so much less racism than 20 years ago or 50 years I ago. I think maybe well, overt. Well, uh, yeah, no, I think no, it was a lot of overt all, right? Well, no, I don't know. Can I, can you I say and I something? disagree. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Um, there is racism in this country. That's not new. There is racism against the president. That's not new. But I, I disagree with uh, putting the mask and the Arizona laws. I think the Arizona laws have to do with losing jobs and and uh, 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 people coming across the border to get those jobs. And why don't they and say that? I, Barbara, but, when you, when you please bang? let me just finish. It's not. It is what they say. It is what they say. And the drug law and the drug wars right across the border. If you had. Canadians, and this doesn't happen, and they were all coming and taking jobs, and there were uh, there were drug what wars jobs there. Are you they would taking? find very much. They are taking. If you look, the reason well, jobs is that they're frankly, taking, no one wants. That's yeah, right. Well, people, yeah. that's Who's right, complaining that, about the jobs? I don't trying. think it's because they are Mexican or because I they're black. Barbara, I know well, you do, I but I let me just that. finish. Sorry, and sorry, I don't well, think that sorry. the mosque <laughs> is because is because the, uh, Muslims have a darker skin. That's fear of terrorism. I, I don't but think Barbara, we can mix everything up and say it's all racism. You know, when sorry. Jam... Oh, sorry, sorry, baby. When Jam Brewer signed into law, uh, th you know, uh, a law that prohibits uh, the children in school from having their ethnic studies, African-American studies, Mexican-American <laughs> studies, and you're prohibiting people from learning about their country and it's and, and it's targeting minorities it certainly seems like because huh, it's not because somebody's had, taking your but job we've also that, had things right. about learning learning another language in school and whether language it should be taught in spanish what i'm saying is of course there's racism but i don't think you can take everything that's happening in this country and say well arizona and the mosque if you are targeting if you're talking about mexicans coming and taking a job say that don't say illegal immigrants when that's not what you mean because people come from canada and people come from england and people come from all over africa, africa all over and they're their uh, visas go away. Mass. But you know what? It's, it, it's, Arizona, if you, is, honestly, if Arizona you are is going more... after illegal immigrants, then you have to go after all illegal immigrants, and not just the brown ones. And I, I agree yeah. with that. I absolutely yeah. think that it's powerful. And I think, you know, we can't spend millions and millions of dollars protecting borders on, in other nations if we cannot even control our own. And I, I do think I that totally we need to. I get you. I get you what you're saying. Think, on all, on all no, sides, okay. though. Yeah. All yeah. I'm saying you. is that we're, we're agreeing that there is racism. But I'm just saying that, that there are other things the mosque has to do with terrorism. It's not just... The, I, I know, we we'll disagree. It's not just... The color of, of I don't think that you can just do a blanket. I think it feels that way. It feels, well, it it feels does, that it way, does. and that's so the question current. I'm posing. Yeah. It, it feels that I'd way. I'd be but asking that question if, if I were brown or black. I but mean, I can totally well, understand how there is that sentiment. I can totally understand how there is that worry, I and I think church, it's legitimate. But I'm saying that it's not necessarily Do you lump the mosque right. in with Mexico? The, um, I do, uh, because, you know, I, I feel very strongly that you cannot take an entire religion and make it responsible right. for the kooky I'm people because you can't, because you have, you know, we don't want to do that with the Catholic religion. We don't want to take that religion and say, well, everybody is this. So it, or the Christians or well, anybody else. The question so would be if the, if the attack on 9 11 was done by Christians, would they not allow a church? Well, right. that is a good question. A that's, a, question. that's a very good question. But it's a valid question to ask because if the answer is yes, then you have a point. Well, yeah. the Catholic Church right now could never afford that property, so that would answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Right you are, and we are going to go and come right back because we know this is going to go on for a while. So we'll be back with more Hot Topics. about that it's Rosh Hashanah and time of reflection. Well, Snooki was fined $500 and sentenced to community service for getting drunk and bothering Jersey Shore beachgoers, and the judge did not mince words. Take a look. Oh, it's on TV. 
I have concerns about how much of this episode was scripted by your show or how much was uh, actions of your own initiative. I mean, if this was scripted, only you can determine if it's worth trading your dignity for a paycheck. It was not scripted, sir. Uh, if this was your idea of having a good time, it appears your recent celebrity has apparently affected your uh, judgment in this matter. Your actions, I don't know, it, you seem to be acting like a Lindsay Lohan wannabe in this matter. Um, going through life rude, profane, obnoxious, and self-indulgent, it's not the way you want to live your life. No, but it's the way it's going to have a reality show. It's the way it's going to have a That'll get you a Playboy spread. Is, why does the judge know about Lindsay Lohan and Snooki? It's the president of Obama. Obama did. President Obama, did. Obama knew about Lindsay you Lohan. Asked him. You'd have to be under a rock not to know these it's days. I'm sorry. And yeah. also, yeah. Lindsay precedent. was a court case as well. So yes. the judge, I mean, that's she... Eagle's yeah. precedent was set yes, with Lindsay. With Lindsay Lohan. I think it was wise to give her the words that he did, and I think maybe but she you know, needed to it's, hear it. It's very interesting with these reality shows because you're so used to them, and it's so much competition. How much do you give them? How much do... How, how overboard do you go? No, she's not fired. Are you be fired? Get she'll, get a raise. she'll get a Playboy Strange. spread from that. Yeah. But how, you know, well, uh, just, excuse me. Just so you know that she did apologize. She did she apologize. She, she, she said, I, I am embarrassed. I over, I, I'm not that yeah, girl. Yeah. I'm not well, that girl. What did you say in front of a judge? Who did you ever see in front of a judge at Wild Eye went, you know what, Your Honor, that, I don't care. Nobody does that. <laughs> You saw Lindsay Lohan oh, in front no, no, of the judge with the nail polish. Yeah. Oh, you know, you're right. You're so, right. But then so, if you come, she was a little defined. Snooki had her lashes, her six well, feet lashes. Well, I, I, you, know, you know what? Because you brought her into my life, I'm going to assume. <laughs> That's right. I didn't know who these people were until I joined The View. Right. <laughs> That's and what I'm wondering about. I know more about these people than I even <laughs> should know. But I'm going to believe that Snooki made a mistake and yes. got drunk and... and Showed her ass. Right. Yeah. Well, it, you know the thing about it will be it will it will depend if she if she changes depending on how much more attention she gets. I wonder She'll how much plenty. more rewarding Please. reward she gets well, from this. We're watching your behind, is, girl. Is the consequence enough? Now, will she be on Dancing with the Stars? Let, ooh, ouch. Ooh. I'm sorry, girl. <laughs> According to a new survey, most of us think. <laughs> That we're hotter than average, Who took and that <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> and it Snooki? may be because we've stopped comparing ourselves to our peers, or started comparing ourselves to the, our peers instead of the impossibly perfect bodies in movies and magazines. That's right. Maybe that's it. I, I, I used to have this fat friend, and I used to say, <laughs> <laughs> what, <laughs> "What happened to her?" And I used to say, "What's she really fat?" I wish I had her mirror because some people just look in the mirror and think they are so stupendously Don't stunning. I, and I say, bravo. I, I wish know. I had a little of that. I, I had a girlfriend so in high school. She had fat legs. She'd walk on the beach and the men would look at her just because she carried herself like she was a gorgeous woman. Because there's a part of you, when you have uh, something that you no angles, that's not nothing. going anywhere, you got to accept it. You embrace <laughs> it and you love it. Or, but but you isn't know that what we are? I'm sorry. Uh, but you know what's interesting? Because we were talking about this earlier. The way the things that are now being considered hot or are exciting. Have you seen the new models? The big thing is the gap between their teeth. Oh, like really? Really? Right. made like myself so famous. Right. Now I had a gap. Oh, yeah. Who's that? The, this, is one of, this is model. one of the new models. Oh, With the gap in between yeah. the teeth? Yeah, the gap in between well, the teeth. The There's gap. a whole spread that I just saw. But Bob, you know, you know what else is there? There I had a gap things. between my yes. teeth. I had it filled in. I'm, oh. well, I'm getting you. mine fixed. I want the gap in my know, teeth fixed. No, no, it's, it's not until the trend like goes away. Wait, it's not just the gap between your teeth, which used to be something that you... The gap in your head. The gap in Tattoos used to be Look, a little a tattoo, Lauren and they oh, love it. She's yeah. got this hair. Yeah. Tattoos are gorgeous, you know. Tattoos are yeah. out. And, and, and tattoos, Barbara, you're in. Place. Show them your scar again. Scars are in. Your heart surgery, your hair. Beige, for some reason, is in. I'm enough with the beige. The beige nails, the beige broom, the beige over the Isn't that what we keep saying we want, particularly for women, to get to see themselves in a light that makes them feel better about themselves? But are you deluded? Like, how would we rate ourselves? You know, How would you rate yourself from one to a ten? You know what? Based okay. on my experience with me, Go. I'm a nine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? You know, I'm not playing this game. I'm not going to argue. 
I'm not playing this game. It's the day for women. You wake up, you might be a four, then all of a sudden you're a six at some point, then you maybe go down to a three. No, I'm, I'm a nine all day, all day long. long. <laughs> because I, that's how, how I was. Win, you know, that's you how just, I was taught. Because yeah. because the one thing that one of the one things that my mom said to me was, "You are not like." everybody else so you're gonna have to work a little differently mm, you're not gonna right. look like these girls because remember it was the brick girl on the back yeah, of the yeah, magazine she girl. said you're not gonna that look bitch like her okay, ruined my life <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah okay. before i ask this question <laughs> i have to do a prologue do you have any doubt that i love you or that i'm crazy about you no. Okay, fine. Now I can say it. So you've got this great body, which I have seen right. here, but you wear. Lesbian moment coming up, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Go ahead, Barbara. You wear every day androgynous clothes. Yes. You don't. You know, you're a nine, but but you don't show. I your don't show it. No. Because the because no, the person that body. comes what? to me, I mean, the person you should see whooping with no clothes on. Yes. Woo! <laughs> I was looking. <laughs> well, here's the thing. The L I word is always <laughs> felt. That's the show, the L word. I've always felt that for me, yeah. that is meant either just for me or the person that's in there with me. You know what I mean? So that not everybody knows, but when I get in and I take it off, it's like, come here, baby. <laughs> you know? I don't have anyone in mind. I'm enjoying my singleness so, uh, quite a bit. Are you saying when you're naked, you don't walk out of the bedroom backwards? Is that what you're telling me? Who can, who can who can turn around with all of this? It's all on the floor. You never turn your back on a man naked. Uh, no, never I don't. Back. Do that. No. Your show's confidence when you can turn. They like I, to see you, you back. You mean you back out like beep, you back beep, out beep, 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 while we're doing this, yes. but my grandmother used to say, and I, when I was very young, I really didn't know what you never show a man you're behind. No. Now Why? I know what because hey, you want to know. makes me cry. Barbara, what are you talking about? No, it's an expression. <laughs> you should with your friend you holding your boobs off. Stop. <laughs> Everything. Never give everything away. Okay, Never cool. say cool. everything. Yeah. That's yeah. the expression. <laughs> that's a, that except for Sherry has to give something away now. Yeah. Or do uh, something. <laughs> a little sanity. And I'm little so sanity. embarrassed for General Paul. Yeah. Who's he just oh, no. walked out. He just walked out. We love Not Poland. Even, really. You know what? We are always, always getting questions from viewers. So we are starting a new segment called V-Mail that lets you be seen and heard on The View. So just upload a video of yourself to our website asking us whatever's on your mind, absolutely anything, and it may end up on The View. Now, remember, we only accept video submissions, so just go to our website to find out exactly how easy it is to upload your video. And it's not a JJ mail it's V-Mail. V-Mail. <laughs> Although that could be one of your video questions. <laughs> <laughs> wow! <laughs> we all. <laughs> we'll be back with more hot topics. Thank you! Ooh, Tomorrow night, Barbara, you have one of the, probably one of the most fascinating specials I think you've ever done called Seven on, uh, Seven Going on 70. Could you talk about it's it a little bit? Seven Going on 70. 70 well, yes. you know, I've interviewed a lot of uh, movie stars and presidents, and I think this is one of the most important and touching specials we've ever done. It's called Seven Going on 70 because it's about children. There are very few of them, only 68 in the whole world, who have a disease called Pejoria. It is not genetic. It is not inherited. In inherited. It comes from a mutant gene, and there are only 16 of them in the United States. Now, they are born normal, and they grow older very quickly, so that by the time they're six or seven, they're like a 70-year-old. And too often, or most often, they die in their teenage years. How many are there? A lot of people uh, like There this? are 16 68 inches. in the whole world and 16 that we know right. of in, in this 
in this country. And they, it's, it's a love story because the love their parents have, I'm going to show you a little clip, for these children who, they all look very much alike. They don't have hair. Um, they are, they, they, when they're born, they're perfectly normal. And then this happens when they're like about a year, a year and a half. But to their parents who adore they them. They do. Yeah. Your heart will it's beat for now, these kids and, there and is, their families. There is, there is a, um, now a clinical drug, a clinical drug that these children are getting, especially the one that we're showing now, Kaylee. Let me tell you about her. She's seven years old. Her name is Kaylee Halko. She's from Ohio. Her parents are Tim and Marla. She has three older brothers who adore her. She just started first grade. Mm. That was a very big deal, just to be able to step on the, on the, on the bus. On the bus. Mm -hmm. And in June of 2007, she started the first, I wrote my notes, started the first clinical drug trial from progeria and she's now in the second stage of the drug trial i want you now to meet kaylee when i met this pint-sized chatterbox she was brimming with confidence kaylee how old are you six and a half and now you're six and and in july you're going to be seven Daddy. that's a big girl Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Big girl, you have progeria, mm -hmm. right? I don't have progeria. Yep. What's the difference between you and me? Well, I have bald head, and you, have, you have hair. If somebody said to you, Kaylee, what is progeria? What would I you say to them? It's a disease. A disease? Mm -hmm. I see. But it's a disease that you manage very well, don't you? Mm hmm Yeah. And, and, and what do you hope? What do you hope is going to happen? I hope um, if I grow hair and grow I, hair. I grow curly hair. Oh. <laughs> and we follow, three, we follow Seven. three of these children. Uh, another child who lives quite near her, and then uh, a child who came over to us from England who is now 13. And, and that's, that's an that's advanced remarkable. age. They, they die from what? An over enlarged they die, heart? They or die from heart disease yeah. or yeah, from the stuff. They die from the things that old people mind. Mind. Mind, mind is. Per, I mean, it does not affect the mind. Mm -hmm. These are intelligent. Adorable. Yeah. 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 When you yeah. meet them with their parents, you know. Does it affect girls more than boys? Well, we children? had three girls. I don't. I don't know. I, I, it may because we have just chosen uh, um, three that we knew. Right. Um, but it's also the story of their parents, whom you will meet. Right. You saw the whole. We oh, sent it to you. We and did. I think kids can watch this too, don't Absolutely. you? Absolutely. You know, I, yeah. I watched parts of it with Grace and Taylor, and they, you know, kids have incredible hearts. So they they saw Kaylee um, as one of their peers, you know, and just wanted to know more about her. And I think when you see the number, you think, well, there aren't that many, but it also means you can really do something to help that number. It's, it's a number that can be reached out to, and it is so touching, Barbara. These kids, the energy and the love and, and the happiness that they have, it's, it teaches you a lesson when you watch it, too. Well, Good it's work. on tomorrow night yes. uh, in That's the 2020 right time period, and it's called Seven Going on 70. Thank you for letting me well, show a little Well, you bit. know, it's, a, it's an amazing special. It is. Watch Thank it. You. Watch it, it. So we're going to go <clears throat> and come right back, because when we come back, we're coming in back with General Colin Powell. <laughs> Chiefs of Staff, he went on to become Secretary of State, and he is one of the most respected and, I think, beloved political figures on both sides of the aisle. We're very happy to welcome back to The View, General Colin Powell. Thank you. 
glad they don't stand up for Snooki no. like this. Let me after, say after that last segment, I walked out. I just <laughs> said that. I thought, we don't do that every day. They called me in the know, parking lot just... and brought me back. <laughs> uh, well, we have more important things to talk about. The mosque. Um, give us your views, and is this kind of controversy hurting our troops? You know, this has been a, a fascinating subject for the last month or so. The concept of the mosque has been around for a long time, and suddenly it went viral because of the media industrial complex. Sort what are you nudging me for about the media? <laughs> You mean the concept well, of putting it there? No, the uh, whole... Uh, nobody was, was upset about it until suddenly it yeah. becomes viral on cable mm -hmm. television right. everywhere. Right. And so I've been thinking about it, how to put it in context. You know, 9-11 was a terrible tragedy for us. And I feel for the families. Some families think it's not a good thing to do. Other families think it is a good thing to do. And I think about what happened in 9-11. And we'll never forget those who were lost. But at the same time, we have to put it in a context. And the context is terrorists can kill people and they can tear down buildings. Mm -hmm. But they don't do it just to kill people and tear down buildings. They do it to terrorize us. They do it to make us terrified. Mm -hmm. And they win if we become terrified mm -hmm. and we start acting in a different way than Americans should act. Right. And what I have seen over the years is that we go after the terrorists with all the power at our disposal. Give them no slack. Go get them. But at the same time, we have to remain who we are and what we are. <coughs> After 9-11, President Bush did something that was very, very important. He reached out to the Muslim community. Yes, he did. And he yes, said, he we're did. going after Al-Qaeda. Right. We're not going after Islam. We're not going after That's Muslims. Right. He went to the mosque in Washington, the Islamic Center in Washington, and he gave a speech. President Bush quoted from the Quran. He talked about the faith of peace. He said to the people of America, don't take this out on our fellow American Muslims. He said to the people of the world, we are not after you, we are after terrorists. We must not lose that spirit, or we've lost something very, very know, important in this country. And I know, just if I may. Yeah. And so we know the terrorists can knock down a building. We know that they can kill fellow citizens. But what they can't do, not one terrorist can do, not 10,000 terrorists can do, is change who we are and what we are as an open, freedom-loving people who believe in our Constitution. With respect to this particular facility... <laughs> with respect to the center, I understand the sensitivity associated with it. But, you know, the Pentagon was also struck. Mm -hmm. There is an Islamic prayer room in the Pentagon. Is that any... I don't know that. that. There I is. There that. is. Right. I was in Walter Reed a few weeks ago visiting uh, some troops who had just come back from... Iraq and Afghanistan. The last soldier I visited had lost both his hands and his feet. And I was walking out of the hospital, and I walked down a corridor, and there was a room that was the chapel. And right next to the chapel was another room for prayers, Islamic prayers. And the point was, we weren't having these prayer places in the Pentagon and in Walter Reed for extremists, they're for Americans. American soldiers and American people who work in the Pentagon and in Walter Reed. And so the center that is being proposed for here in New York City is a center that will attract Americans of all faiths. There will be places for Christians to do things and Jews to do it's things and Muslims. Center. It's There's a community a center. There's a swimming pool. But is this hurting our so, troops, this kind of... Well, yes, I think eventually it will, because I'm saying to myself, OK, this is a center that will attract all of our citizens to come and reflect, and yes, there'll be a mosque inside for our Islamic brothers to pray. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying to myself, what is wrong with this? And does it make a difference whether it's two, three, four, five, or ten blocks away? And the answer is, if you believe in our system and if you understand why we can do it in the Pentagon and Walter Reed, then you can't make a distinction between two, three, five, and ten blocks. So right. yeah. I think it should go forward. But if the people of New York and the authorities of New York, in consultation with the people who are building it, decide it ought to be four, five, or six blocks away, I don't have any problem with that. But I think the important principle is that we must go forward. The Islamic Center that President Bush went to, it was dedicated by Dwight Eisenhower in 1957. And he even said it in his dedication remarks, you know, if it takes the full power of the United States to make sure that you have the right to put a church, a religious place here, then we will do it. And he meant here in Washington, D.C. 
And so I think we have to be very, very careful. And it's sort of spread out beyond just the issue of the building and the mosque. There's a bit of Islamophobia now across the country in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, no mosques. Same thing in California. And because of all the attention, suddenly an unknown preacher in Florida with, with, with you know, this yeah. is this is it's absurd. A Nobody now. ever heard of this guy. No. But once again, the media pumped him up. Now he's on morning talk shows. What's he doing on morning talk shows? This guy should be rejected. General Petraeus is right. There are a billion Muslims who are watching this mosque issue and they're watching what's going on in Florida. Mm. And they're wondering, has America changed? Is America different? Whether he burns the Quran or not on Saturday, they already assume the that America has changed if they even tolerate this kind of thing. And so I think we've got a problem. I think so we've got to, we've got to take a deep breath. And, and politicians are using this for all kinds of purposes, and we've got to get back to the basics. Is there any way to stop him from doing it legally? I don't think no. so. No. He's and that's part of the First Amendment. The First right. Amendment protects terrible yes. speech. They don't, probably a lot of well, people don't understand the First Amendment. It, it's hard to grasp it sometimes. It is. Protecting, but you know, Nazis it's, it's marching the, it's or. the foundation of who we are and what we are. We don't have to yeah. give them more attention, is what you're saying. What no. I'm saying yes. is, uh, I don't know why we give them all this attention. Yeah. We want to give you more attention, though. Stay with us. We're not going to do what we did a few minutes ago. You'll be safe. We'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back with more general politics. General Colin Powell. General, uh, the president announced last week that combat operations have ended in Iraq. And I remember back um, in 2002, you warned President Bush um, about breaking, if you break it, you fix it. Uh, we certainly If you have, break it, you, if you, break it. It, you mm -hmm. own it. The Pottery Barn Rule, that's right, mm -hmm. yes. um, in Iraq. Certainly, <laughs> a price has been paid. Do you think it's been yeah, worth a price, it? A price has been paid. And uh, my, my words to the president was, if, you, if, if we do this, we become the government as soon as we've taken the government out under international law. Mm. And so we've become responsible for the security of the people and taking care of the people. And uh, I want to make sure he understood the implications of that, and, and he did. We tried to avoid the war by going to the UN, but war came. Mm. Was it worth and, it? Uh, we don't know yet, because we lost over 4,000 Americans. Lots of Iraqis yes. lost their lives. But we do have a government that's there that's struggling to try to mm -hmm. form a coalition government. Uh, but we've struggled in trying to form governments, as some may sure. recall. Absolutely. And at the same time, a terrible dictator is gone. And even though we were wrong about weapons of mass destruction, it's not an issue we'll ever have to worry about again. Or about somebody like Saddam Hussein putting back in weapons of mass destruction right. to replace right. those who were gone. Well, so it remains to be seen. I think that um, American troops will have to remain there at a much lower level for some time to give the Iraqis the training they need and the stability they need. And we'll have to make a judgment in due course as to whether we all, as a nation, thought it was the correct Can I say, some thing. people say that Saddam Hussein's presence there actually was a check on Ahmadinejad in Iran, and that his, de his demise has caused Ahmadinejad to go out of control, that we should have kept him exactly where he was, and we wouldn't have this problem with uh, Iran. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept that, uh, that judgment. I think the, or the Iranians do what the Iranians are going to do. They're moving with this nuclear program. I think there are ways diplomatically to keep it from becoming a weapon, but we're engaged in that. Secretary Clinton's working on that very hard. But remember, Iraq and Iran did have an eight-year war with each other, which ended in a truce, did not end. There's no question that Iran has probably greater influence in Baghdad now than it had before. Right, sure. But it is not clear to me that that necessarily uh, makes for a very unstable situation. The Iraqis are not about to allow themselves to go under the complete control or control of the Iranians. General Powell, with regards to Afghanistan, you feel that if we go into war, we go into it to win. So how, how would that be done with Afghanistan? I think Afghanistan is a far more difficult problem than Iraq was. Because in Iraq, you had a population that was well-educated, it was literate, it had a history of functioning as a state. Uh, Iraq uh, was pretty, pretty stable in that regard, even with a dictator. Afghanistan... You have essentially a country that right. consists of tribes. Right. It's very, uh, the literacy rate is quite low. And we have a government, frankly, that is not functioning the way we need a government to function. So well, what do we do? It's so we get to well, I think the president has said 
we will surge, and the surge is now complete. The new troops are there. We will try to stabilize different parts of the country as best we can. And then next July, the president's going to have to take a very hard look at where we are. General Petraeus will make his report in December and then make a judgment in July. Uh, and we have to make sure that we are continuing to progress. Otherwise, the president's going to have to start drawing down troops. We can't stay there forever. Mm -hmm. But I think the real burden falls on the uh, Afghan government, the Afghan people, to decide what kind of government do they want and then what kind of life do they want to live, uh, what, what do they want to do for their people. Let me just come back to something we talked about earlier that General Petraeus said. We have to be very, very careful that if we give any more credence to this pastor in Florida or if we let Islamophobia go across this country, it puts General Petraeus in a terrible situation mm -hmm. because it's a recruiting, yep. right. it's a recruiting right. effort oh. for yes. more yeah. radicals. And so it. we've got to be very, very careful not to, you know, we ought to debate this issue, but at the same time, remember, we've got no, troops the over media, there fighting. You want the media to pay, to have a little more... I want the uh, media... Back off. I, look, it's like, it's like the case with uh, Mrs. Sherrod, the mm -hmm. agricultural mm -hmm. lady. A crazy con uh, a statement was taken out of context, and within an hour, yeah. mm -hmm. the agriculture department lost its mind, the NAACP lost its mind, the she White House got flustered, mm -hmm. she lost her job, mm -hmm. right. and a few hours later, somebody said, hey, I just looked at the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we, we have got to all, s let's count to 10 before well, we leap on yeah. these things. Right. Yeah. Right. So I, let me let me ask you, because you don't hardly ever slow down, and you're in New York to cut the ribbon on the what? The Colin L. Powell Apartments in the South Bronx. Yeah! Yeah. 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 The wonderful uh, 50 apartments co-op uh, put together by a private corporation and Habitat for Humanity in, in New York and Blue Sea Corporation, Development Corporation. And it's two blocks from my old home. It's one block from my church, uh, two blocks from my elementary school and my, hmm. and my junior high school. So I'm hmm. very excited to go up there right after I leave here and cut the ribbon. Get the it's, it's so, absolutely. Who is it for? Uh, for people who are of medium to low income mm -hmm. and gives them a beautiful apartment in a very, very beautiful green building, a very, very That's environmentally nice. correct. Cool. It's got a lead platinum rating, which is the highest rating right. you can get with respect to having a green building. And what's most exciting about it is uh, my old neighborhood has come back. Mm. Come back from the days of the Beautiful. 70s when it went into the ditch. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's nice New to York see come back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. also proud to be on the board of the Colin Powell Center at uh, City College, City College which, well, which, that, which, yeah. which trains uh, young people to go out and do public service, yeah. which is what you That's now okay. spend your life doing. Exactly. I'm very proud to have a center named after me. Uh, when I left City College of New York 52 years ago, I didn't think they'd ever name anything after me. <laughs> <laughs> And the kids who were your friends there said, he's never going to get anywhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. And look sorry. at you now. Is that Honestly, we are... named after you? That's what I want to know. A sandwich or a shake, <laughs> maybe. We thank you for your visit, for your thank wisdom, you and your continued service to this country, thank General. We appreciate it. We will be right back. Our thanks to the General. Tonight on ABC, please watch my very special special on the most engaging children you will ever meet. In the meantime, take a little time to enjoy the view.